Tales, we're at chapter 62, Children of Blood and Bone. We just had an epic twist. Oh, I'm sorry, I just hit my puppy in the nose. Um, epic twist in our conflict here where they've invaded the camp and Zelly has been grabbed by the gods. So Amari continues it. As the sun rises into the valley, a sob catches my throat. The rays light the charred clearing where the procession occurred, the blackened remains of what was once a joyful place. I stare at the scorched earth where Tizane and I danced, recalling how he twirled me, remembering the sound of his laugh. All that remains now is blood, hollow corpses, ash. I close my eyes and clasp my hand to my mouth, a futile attempt to block out the painful sight. Though it's silent, the cries of diviners still echo in my mind. The shouts of the soldiers who slaughtered them follow, the clash of swords striking into flesh. I cannot bear to look, but Tizane scans the destruction, searching for Zelly among every fallen face. I don't see her. Tizane's voice is barely above a whisper. Like if he speaks any louder, everything inside him will break. His rage, his pain, the heartache of having another family member ripped away. Thoughts of Enon force their way into my mind. His promises, his potential lies. Though I can't bring myself to search the dead, I can feel it in my core. Enon's corpse isn't on the ground. No part of me wants to believe this was his doing, yet I don't know what to think. If this wasn't his betrayal, how did the guards find us? Where is my brother now? Nayla whimpers behind us, and I stroke her snout this way I've seen Zelly do so many times before. A lump rises in my throat when she nuzzles my hand back. I think they took her. I say as delicately as I can. It's what my father would have ordered. She's far too important to kill. I hope this will give him hope, but... Tizane's expression stays even. He stares at the bodies on the ground, his breaths escaping in short spurts. I promised, his voice cracks. When Mama died, I promised. I'd said I'd always be there. I swore I'd take care of her. You have, Tizane, you always have. But he's lost in his own world, a place far beyond where my words could go. And Baba... His body seizes. He clenches his fist to try and stop the trembling. I told Baba. I I told him I would. I lay my hand on Tizane's back, but he retreats from my touch. It's as if every tear Tizane has ever fought back comes pouring out of his body at once. He crumples into the dirt, pressing clenched fists against his head so hard I worry he'll get hurt. His heartache bleeds raw breaking through his every wall. You cannot give up. I drop to Tizane's side to wipe away his tears. Despite everything, he has always stayed strong, but this loss is too much to bear. We still have the scroll, the stone, and the dagger. Until my father has retrieved the artifacts, his men will keep her alive. We can save her and get to the temple. We can still make this right. She won't talk. Tizane whispers. Not if we're at risk. They'll torture her. His hands clench the earth. She's as good as dead. Zelly is stronger than anyone I know. She'll survive. She'll fight. But Tizane shakes his head, unconvinced no matter how hard I try. She'll die. He squeezes his eyes shut. She'll leave me all alone. Nayla's whimper grows as she nuzzles to Zane, attempting to lick his tears away. The sight crushes everything inside me, destroying the last fragments that were whole. It's like watching the magical light explode from Binta's palms only for Father's sword to rip through her chest. How many families has Father left like this, broken beyond repair, mourning their dead? How many times will I allow him to do it again? I stand on the hill and turn toward the town of Gombe, a speck of pluming smoke before the Alasimbo range. The map in Father's War Room reappears inside my mind, crystallizing the X's that marked his military bases. 
As the layout forms in my head, a new plan falls into my place. I cannot let Tizane endure this loss. I will not let Father win. We need to move, I say. Amari, now! Tizane lifts his head from the ground. I reach down and grab his hand, wiping the dirt sticking to the tear stains on his face. There is a guard fortress outside Gombe. That has to be where they took her. If we can get in, we can get her out. We can bring Father's tyranny to an end. Zane stares at me with broken eyes, fighting the spark of hope that tries to light. How could we get in? I turn back to the silhouette of Gombe against the night sky. I have a plan. Will it work? I nod, for once not fearing the fight. I was the lion heir once. For Tizane and Zelly, I shall be her again. Okay, so we just finished chapter 62, so take a moment in your notes and summarize it. And also, Go Amari's super character growth here, so how has she grown as a character? And how do we think she's going to get into this guard military base going through? So chapter 63 is in Zelly's perspective. Magicite cuffs scald my skin searing straight through my wrists and ankles. The black chains suspend me above the floor of my jail cell, making it impossible, impossible for me to cast an incantation. Sweat drips down my skin as another warm blast funnels through the vent. The heat must be intentional. Heat will make the coming pain worse. Live. Lakin's words echo, a taunt as I face my death. I told him it was a mistake. I told him, I told everyone. I begged them not to waste this chance on me. Now look what I've done. I laughed and spun and kissed as the king prepared our slaughter. Metal-soled boots clank outside. I flinch as they near my door. It would be easier if my cell had bars. At least then I could prepare myself. But they've locked me in an iron box. Only two burning torches keep me from being left in the dark. Whatever they plan to do, they intend to hide it from the guards. I swallow hard, a feeble attempt to quench my dry mouth. You've done this before, I remind myself, more times than you can count. For a moment, I ponder whether Mama Agba's constant lashings weren't to punish, but to prepare. She beat me so often, I got good at taking it, good at loosening my body to minimize the aches. Could she sense that my life would end this way? Damn it. Tears sting my eyes, the shame of all the corpses I've left in my wake. Little BC, Lake, and Zoo. Their sacrifice will never amount to anything. This is all my fault. We never should have stayed. Somehow we must have led the army to that camp. Without us, they might still be alive. Zoo could have survived. My thoughts slow. Tizane's glare flashes into my mind. My heart seizes at the thought. Could Enan have done this? No. My throat burns with the fear I choke back like bile. He wouldn't. After everything we've been through, he couldn't. If he wanted to betray me, he had countless opportunities. He could have made off with the scroll without taking all those innocent lives away. Amari's face overtakes Tizane's her amber eyes dripping with pity. Either he's about to betray us, or something else is taking place. Enan's smile breaks through their hate, the soft gaze he gave me before we kissed, but it blackens and it twists and it burns until it wraps around my throat with the strength of his grip. No. I close my eyes, remembering the way he held me in his arms. He saved me. Twice. And he tried to save me again. He didn't do this. He couldn't have. A clink sounds. The first lock outside my door opens. I brace myself for pain, holding on to the last good things I have left. At least Tizane is alive. At least he and Amari survived. With Nayla's speed, they had to have gotten away. I have to focus on that. One thing turned out right. And Baba... The thread of tears burns behind my eyes as I remember the crooked grin I prayed I would see once more. When he finds out about this, he'll never smile again. I 
close my eyes as the tears fall, stinging like tiny knives. I hope he's dead. I hope he never experiences that pain. The final lock unhinges and the door groans open. I steel myself. But when Enan feels the entryway, my every defense breaks. My body jolts against the chains as the little prince walks in, flanked by two lieutenants. After days of seeing him in muted caftans and borrowed dashikis, I forgot how he could look in a guard's uniform. No. I search him for any sign of the boy who promised me the world. The boy I almost gave up everything for. But his eyes are distant. Tizane was right. You liar! My scream echoes in the cell. The words aren't enough. They can't cut the way I need them to, but I can barely think. I grip the metal chain so hard they rip through my skin. I need the pain to distract myself, otherwise nothing will stop my tears. Leave. Enan orders his lieutenants, looking at me as if I were nothing. Like I wasn't in his embrace just hours ago. She's dangerous, your highness. We can't... That was an order, not a suggestion. The guards exchange glances, but reluctantly leave the room. Gods know they can't defy a direct order from the precious prince. Clever, I shake my head. It's not hard to guess why Enan wants privacy. The white streak that shone so vibrantly in his hair hides under a new coat of black dye. Can't have anyone finding out the truth about their little prince. Was this his plan all along? I squeeze everything in me to keep my face even. He doesn't get to see my pain. He doesn't get to know how he's hurt me. The door swings shut, leaving us alone. He looks at me as we hear the sounds of the guards retreating. It's only when we can't hear them anymore that his hardened face crumbles into the boy I know. Eden's amber gaze fills with fear as he steps forward, eyes catching on the largest blood stain on my dress. A warm rush of air fills my lungs. I don't know when I stopped breathing. I don't know when I started needing him this much. I shake my head. It's not my blood, I whisper. Not yet. What happened? How did they find us? The festival, Enan looks down. Diviners went into Gombe to get supplies. A few guards got suspicious and tailed them. Gods. I bite back a new wave of tears that want to come forth. Slaughtered for a celebration. One we never should have had. Zell, we don't have much time. He rushes out, voice strained and hoarse. I couldn't get to you until now, but a military caravan just docked. Someone's coming, and when they do... Enan turns back to the door, hearing something that isn't there. Zell, I need you to tell me how to destroy the scroll. What? There's no way I heard him correctly. After everything, he can't think that's the answer. If you tell me how to destroy it, I can protect you. Father will kill you as long as the possibility of magic coming back is still a threat. By the gods. He doesn't even realize we've already lost. The scroll means nothing without someone to read it. But I can't let him know that. They'll slaughter us all if they find out, erasing every man, woman, and child. They won't stop until we're gone until they've wiped our existence from this world with their hate. They're vicious, Zell. Enan swallows hard, bringing me back to the present. If you don't give it up, you won't survive. Then I don't survive. Enan's face twists. If you don't talk, they'll cut it out of you. A lump forms in my throat. I guess this much. I can't talk. So I'll bleed. Zell, please. He steps forward, putting his hands on my bruised face. I know we had our plans, but you have to realize everything's changed. Of course everything's changed, I scream. Your father's men killed Zu, Salim, all those children. I shake my head. They couldn't even fight, and the guards murdered all of them. Enan grimaces, face splitting with pain. His soldiers, his men, our undoing once again. 
Zelly, I know. His voice breaks. I know. Every time I close my eyes, her body is all I can see. I look away, fighting back fresh tears. Zoo's bright smile fills my mind. Her endless joy, her light. We should have been halfway to Zarya by now. She and Kwame should still be alive. They shouldn't have attacked, Enan whispers. Zoo deserved a chance. But the soldiers thought you were using the scroll to create a Magi army. And after what Kwame did, Enan's voice trails off. All the grief that filled him before seems to shrink overpowered by fear. Kwame took out three platoons in seconds, burned them alive. He incinerated that camp. We'd probably be dead if he hadn't burned out himself. I rear back in disgust. What in God's name is he talking about? Kwame sacrificed himself to protect us. Imagine how it looked to the guards. Enan speaks quickly. I know Kwame's intentions were pure, but he took it too far. For years, we've been warned about magic like that. But what Kwame did was worse than anything Father's ever said. I blink, searching Enan's face. Where's the future king who was ready to save the Magi? The prince who threw himself in front of flames to keep me safe? I don't know this boy. Afraid, making excuses for everything he claimed to hate? Or maybe I know him too well. Maybe this is the truth. The broken little prince. Make no mistake. The attack was an abomination. I know we'll have to deal with it, but right now we have to act. The soldiers are terrified a magi like Kwame will attack again. Good. I squeeze my chains to hide the tremor in my hands. Let them be afraid. Let them taste the terror they make us swallow. Zelly, please, Enan grits his teeth. Don't choose this. We can still unite our people. Work with me. I'll find a way for you to return to Lagos. We'll save Arisha with something safer, something without magic. What's wrong with you? My voice echoes against the walls. There's nothing to save. After what they just did, there's nothing at all. Enan stares at me, a flash of tears in his eyes. You think I want this. You think after playing in a new kingdom with you, I want this. I see my own grief reflected in his eyes. The death of our dream, the future Arisha will never see. I thought things could be different. I wanted them to be different. But after what we just saw, we have no choice. We can't give people that kind of power. There's always a choice, I hiss. And your guards made theirs. If they were scared of magic before, they should be terrified now. Zelly, don't add your body to the dead. That scroll is the only way I convinced them to keep you alive. If you don't tell us how to destroy it... Another click sounds through the door. Enan steps back just as it opens. Did I say you could enter... His voice falters. The color drains from his face. Father? Enan's lips part in surprise. Even without his crown, it's impossible not to recognize the king. He enters like a storm, the air darkening his presence. A wave of emotions hit me as the door swings shut. I forget how to breathe as I meet the soulless eyes of the man who murdered Mama. Gods help me. I don't know if I'm in a dream or a nightmare. My skin heats with a rage like I've never known. Yet my pulse thunders with fear. Since the early days after the raid, I've pictured this moment, imagined what it would be like to meet him face to face. I've orchestrated his death so many times in my mind, I could fill a tome detailing all the ways he should die. King Saren rests his hand on Enan's shoulder. His son flinches, as if waiting for a blow. Despite everything, the flash of terror in Enan's eyes pains me. I've seen him broken before, but... This is a side of him I don't know. The guards tell me you tracked her to the uprising. Enan stands up straight and clenches his jaw. Yes, sir. I'm in the middle of an interrogation. If you leave us, I'll get you the answers we need. Enan's voice stays so even I almost believe the lie. He's trying to keep me away from his father. He must know I'm about to die. 
A shudder runs through me at the thought, but it's quickly met with an unearthly calm. The fear in Saren's presence is undeniable, yet it doesn't overwhelm my desire for vengeance. And this man, this one wretched man, is an entire kingdom, an entire nation of hate and oppression staring me in the face. It may have been the guards who broke down the doors in Abaddon that day, but they were simply his tools. Here lies the heart. What of Admiral Kia? Saren lowers his voice. Is this her killer? Enan's eyes widen and drift to me, but when Saren follows his gaze, Enan realizes his mistake. No matter what he says, he can't stop the king of Arisha from approaching me now. Even in the sweltering room, Saren's very presence chills my bones, my blood. The burning in my skin intensifies as he nears with his magicite blade. This close to him, I can make out the pock marks in his deep brown skin, the gray hairs of old age speckled through his beard. I wait for the slurs, but there's something worse about the way he looks at me, distant, removed, like I'm some beast dragged from the mud. My son seems to think you know how the Admiral died. Enan's eyes bulge. It's written all over his face. Someone died. His words from the festival come back to me. Someone I loved. But it wasn't just someone. It was Kia. I asked you a question. Saren's voice breaks back in. What happened to my Admiral? Your Magi son killed her. Behind Saren, Enan jerks back, likely horrified at my thoughts. There are secrets I should scream to the world. Secrets I should spill onto this floor. But something about Enan's terror makes it impossible for me to break. I look away instead, unable to stomach the monster who ordered Mama's death. If Enan's truly on my side, then when I die, the little prince might be the diviner's only hope. Saren's grip jerks my chin back to his face. My whole body flinches. The calm that sat in Saren's eyes before explodes with a violent rage. You would do well to answer me, child. And I would. I would do well indeed. It would be perfect to have Saren find out here, try to kill Enan himself. Then Enan would have no choice to attack back. Kill his father, take the throne, rid Arisha of Saren's hate. Plotting, are we? Saren asks, cooking up those precious incantations. He digs me, digs into me so hard his nails draw blood from my chin. Make any moves, and I will personally rid your body of its wretched hands. F Father, Enan's voice is faint, but he forces himself forward. Saren glances back, wrath still burning in his eyes. Yet something about Enan reaches him. With a violent jerk, he releases my face. His lips curl as he wipes his fingers against his robe. I suppose I should be angry with myself, he muses quietly. Pay attention, Enan. When I was your age, I thought the children of the maggots could live. I thought their blood needn't be spilled. Saren grabs onto my chains, forcing me to meet his eyes. After the raid, you should have been desperate to keep magic away. You were supposed to be afraid, obedient. Now I see there is no educating your kind. Your maggots will crave the disease tainting your blood. You could have taken magic away without killing us, without beating our bodies into the ground. He jumps as I pull against my chains, wild like a rabid lion air. I itch to unleash my magic, fueled by the blackest part of my rage. A rage born because of everything he took. A new searing burns my flesh as I fight the magicite, doing everything I can to call forth my magic despite the power of the black chains. Smoke sizzles from my skin as I fight in vain. Saren's eyes narrow, but I can't be silent. Not when my blood boils and my muscles shake to break free. I will not let my fear silence the truth. You crushed us to build your monarchy, monarchy on the backs of our blood and bone. Your mistake wasn't keeping us alive. It was thinking we'd never fight back. Enan steps forward, jaw taut, eyes traveling back and forth between us. The fury in Saren's gaze flares as he lets out a long, low chuckle. You know what intrigues me about your kind? You always start in the middle of the story. 
as if my father didn't fight for your rights, as if you maggots didn't burn my family alive. You can't enslave an entire people for the rebellion of a few. Saren bares his teeth. You can do whatever you want when you're the king. Your ignorance will be your downfall. I spit in Saren's face. Magic or not, we won't give up. Magic or not, we will take back what's ours. Saren's lips curl back in a snarl. Brave words for a maggot about to die. Maggot. Like Mama. Like every brother and sister slaughtered by his command. You'd be wise to kill me now, I whisper. Because you're not getting any of the artifacts. Saren smiles slow and sinister like a jungle cat. Oh, child, he laughs. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Okay, so we just finished chapter 63, and we finally are really seeing King Saren face-to-face -face for a lengthy period of time. We've only had really short spurts of him in the earlier portions of the book. So what more are we learning about him? How are we seeing him with everything? And what do you think about Enid? So do we still totally trust him? What's going on with him? Do you agree with how he sort of changed totally his perspective on what to do about magic and save everybody or not? So take a few moments for your notes, do your summaries on those chapters, and then continue on to chapter 64.